The Gorgon Project's natural gas supply undergoes a long journey to reach the onshore processing plant on Barrow Island. We are pushing technology across the board, not only in the design phase, but also in the installation phase. Culminating in the largest subsea gathering system in Australia's history. The vast Gorgon and Jans IO gas fields provide the source gas behind Australia's largest single resource project. There's 18 wells in total, so the drilling groups were out there drilling the wells that go down into the reservoir and actually it let us uh, recover the gas from the fields. Completing each well involves installing the wellhead and connecting a Christmas tree. It's a very special piece of equipment. Uh, not only does it have the valves, it also has the controls, the smarts, that let us operate those valves from Barrow Island. The production system consists of 20 subsea structures, including manifolds. A manifold is a subsea structure where you have various pipes and valves that control the fluids that comes either to or fro the wells. It's more like a distribution centre. The structures that we've got for Gorgon and Jantz are different from other past projects. These structures are much bigger. We're lifting a thousand ton structures down to 1300 metres. A lot of cranes nowadays don't have the capacity to lift a thousand tonnes, let alone to lift it all the way down to the seabed. So we've had to develop a new deep water lowering system to actually enable that to happen safely. We factor safety into everything because everything out here is big, it's unforgiving and there's always risks with everything that we do. All the equipment that we handle is big and it's heavy, so we have to be careful. We're utilising a lot of heavy lifting equipment to put these installations in. We need an ROV with the capabilities of heavy lifting. We want to be able to then go straight into survey or inspection of the equipment on the installation once it's on the seabed. Gas gathered at the subsea structures is transported along pipelines. During that fabrication process we have to have very strict tolerances on how big and how the wall thickness needs to match each and every other joint. That pipe is then cut up into 12 metre sections and then transported down to the pipe lay vessel. These vessels are the largest in the world and deploying some of the largest pipelines in the deepest oceans in the world. They join a pipe 12, 13 metres long they weigh upwards of 10 tons. Handling each piece of pipe offshore of this size, this weight, is a very uh, delicate operation. Those joints get put into the firing line. So in that firing line, we line up the joints of pipe, we weld them together, we inspect them, and then gradually lower them off the back of the vessel. Normally on a good day on a pipeline spread, we would like to get 100, 125 joints a day of this size pipe. When we were welding the scarp wells, we were happy to get four to six. This is how complicated, how exact that these wells had to be. Crossing the scarp presented the team with one of its greatest challenges. This garment, it's very simply, it's like an underwater cliff. We actually went into a very extensive program of seabed investigations that ended up going on for several years looking for the different ways we could route the pipelines to get them back to Barrow Island. During a normal pipeline construction activity, we are comfortable with a 20, 30 meter free span. This free span is somewhere in the neighborhood of 250, 300 meters. The pipeline system is complete with the installation of tie-in spools. A spool is basically an interconnecting piece of pipe between the wellhead and the manifolds. These are the last pieces of the puzzle that we had to install to ensure that we had a, a complete pipeline system from the well to bear out. Each spool was installed either using a space frame or tubular space frame with outriggers. The pipelines come ashore on the west coast of Barrow Island. The drill rig we had at North White's Beach, there was actually two of them, is designed to drill sideways. By using the horizontal directional drilling technique, we were able to limit our impact on the island 
We are able to retain the natural features of the site. Pipelines and umbilicals are threaded through the shore crossing. The umbilicals for both Gorgon and Jan's IO are the lifeline that, that allows us to operate the subsea equipment. Back behind the sand dunes at the beach, there's actually a termination point where those umbilicals are anchored and tied off. And then from there, back to the LNG plant, we have bundles of hydraulics and separate power and fibre optic. The Gorgon project is different from other projects in the fact that it's the size and the magnitude of what we're trying to do. You know, to build something that will last for 50 years, from an engineering perspective, this is major. What we're doing today will benefit people who are not born yet. 